Okay, so just about to fire it up. Negative back on. That goes there. The positive, I put a new end. Got to make sure you hammer this all the way down. People don't realize that you have more surface area. This has got to stick out. And you see how far wide it is, you know. And when I tighten it, it'll be a lot better. I still got to tighten the battery. Now, as far as the um, alternator goes, the wiring, uh, might be a little hard to see, but it would have been better if I did a follow up. But see that pl white plug there has a red and a, r a white wire. The red one has to go to the back of the alternator and spliced into the positive. So that's going to the back of the alternator, the main bolt. And that main bolt there goes to this, this wire here. Huge wire. Six gauge for the back of the alternator. That way it's not going to be an issue. Then I have the, the, the two wires that originally were there. You have the white one, which now is a red wire, which is a small skinny wire. That's the one that's going to turn on the light. And turn off the light. The other red one was tapped into the, uh, you know, it gave power to the generator and it just needed a little tiny power. I don't need that wire. I could put it to the back of the alternator as well, but it's just redundant. So it's live right now. I got to tape it up, but uh, it's cut short. It's not really going anywhere. So that's really all it is. And then when it comes to that original wiring, um, this is that white wire coming off the um uh the one that i displaced that that was you know now turned to red that one right there it this is the one that goes directly to the generator gauge i had to go online and look for a um wiring schematic to see where the light went and that should be right that should turn it on properly i sure hope so um i'm gonna find out or it'll be reversed you know which is not a good thing either but you know it is what it is i'll figure it out later but the other this small red one went to here and that's just this small red one went goes to that 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 wire that's cut and I could leave I could have left it off but it gave it gave it power I can take it off another day and just leave this one here this is also redundant that this this wire here goes just goes right here so I could take the power off anytime I want um, but I just wanted to leave the integrity of the original system kind of intact without hacking up all this stuff you know, not that anybody's going to be bringing it back, but I got the official 1963 brackets and how to get the 1963 belt. And um, uh, that way it's wired properly for that. Now, uh, this battery terminal is a little bigger. I really didn't want it that big now that I realize it because I'm close to the, uh, to the hood here. And this is what caused all my problems to begin with. You know, like the car was charging when I got it. And then I went and carefully put the car in the garage because the positive was in the front here and I got a longer negative cable because this was plenty long you know it was long to fit here so it'll fit here I got a longer negative cable and I swapped the battery on because this is a Walmart battery they're great batteries this is a bigger battery so it has more power and it's a little high sitting so what happened was I lowered the hood and then as I was walking I just barely leaned on the hood and it latched car stalled it started smoking and so i hurried up i popped it open the hood and the only thing that seemed like it melted was this ground wire that kind of just went to the body and i have no idea where it went you know to be honest maybe it went to the other horn but the horn works i don't know why this ground wire is where it is but i just i say fuck it right now but all this got hot but it didn't hurt any of the wires i checked every single wire in the in the path and every, you know so, something got hot in here but it's really not um you know, I, I checked the continuity, everything, everything was intact, so, but it wasn't charging after that. And then, um, not only was it wasn't charging, it was actually overcharging, and the generator light was so bright, it burned out, and it uh, melted the connection in the back of the dashboard. I had to fix that, and I changed all the bulbs, went back, and I got a new voltage regulator, put it in, boom, car charge is fine. The next day, generator started smoking. I was 12.2 volts. But 12.2 volts, I had everything on. No matter what I put on, it was staying at 12.2 volts. Of course, the day I tried to go to work with the car, it died. Uh, literally, like, three miles from the house. And I had to use a jumper pack to get home. And, um, you know, and then I had other problems. But now, I'm going to see how this works. And um, start it up and see if it charges. i got to get a little... Um, uh, you know, meter, and then I'll tighten these up, and then I'll give another video.